Hey, today I want to talk about um, festivals and some changes that I have been um, witnessing in the last number of years. And I engage in um, event management. I wouldn't say on a regular basis, it's not something I'm doing on a daily basis, but on a regular basis, so it could be every month or every couple of months. And most of those uh, festivals are what I would consider small music lifestyle um, festivals, usually between um, 150 to 5,000 people. And that's really sort of started out 10 years ago, getting into like the outdoor um, music, electronic music um, scene in New Zealand and little doofs that um, I used to go to and you know I probably don't engage with them that much now I'm into other outdoor music lifestyle um, gatherings although it's not to say that I wouldn't go to a doof it's, it's um, you know people we, we change we grow we we engage in other various things and um, I'm just also aware of like where where is my time and energy best served um, and appreciated and um, there's a reciprocity in that and you know I love going to this ca like camping multi-day um, events um, you know when I came across the scene I was like oh my gosh I wish I found this sooner uh, but that's okay and I was probably maybe about 20 when I came across it because I'd been into electronic music um, a lot since I was about 15 thank you to my stepdad who's really into electronic music and I just sort of just dreamt that I'd have to go to Europe to these big nightclubs to to listen to it in public spaces and then one day you know, I was studying some older students uh, one in particular was talking to me about these like electronic, like outdoor, um, small um, camping events that they would go to, and then um, you know it was all a little bit like a, a bit of a niche and like a bit of a, an adventure to get there, and you know not every man and his dog would be there kind of thing. And I was like, oh, this sounds really cool. This sounds like really up my my alley. And I went to one, and I remember, um, yeah, there was one called Alienation, and I remember like the last day, they take you through this process, um, if you wish, where you can get a free ticket, and the exchange for that is that you get branded, like with a hot iron, on your skin, with the symbol of the um, of the event. And I remember like thinking like this is really cool I really like what these guys have got going on like I really want to engage in this more but the branding thing that's like a little culty I don't know like if I have to do that to join I don't know I'm kind of like I'm on the fence about that <laughs> and then gosh you know realizing it's not actually something you have to do and yeah it was just um interesting to go to such an event with this kind of extremity and yet I was still like I want more of this please give me more of this in my life this is yum 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 and I think some things that I really enjoyed about it from the get-go is this like level of creativity um, reciprocity community connection the substances as well you know like it's you know, I've, I've done a video where I've talked about having had alcohol for like 10 years and, um, and I don't engage in other substances recreationally either. But at the time it was like, oh wow, like we can actually kind of get out of this boring box of like drinking alcohol and we can enter the realms of these other sort of spaces. And, you know, a lot of that is expanding awareness and consciousness up to a certain level. You can only go so far um, with those sorts of things. That's just my perception anyway. Um, but yeah, obviously it's very apparent now and it has been, um, you know, the last few years we've had to go through a lot of changes with the sort of outdoor music, um, scene and I'm based here, Amaru, South East Queensland and we have quite an active sort of scene to a certain degree here. Um, in the winter there, we sort of have a bit of a movement where it goes further up North Queensland 
where it's a bit warmer. And then for most of the other times of the year, there's sort of events happening, you know, if it's not once every month, it's once every couple of months. And then we have dogs like sort of going in this area, you know, within maybe two, three hour drive, kilometer radius of Brisbane. I would say, you know, if it's not every week, it's every fortnight. So it's reasonably um, active in that sense, but it's not like a huge thing. You know, it's quite common if you go to a DOF, it's sort of like 50 to 100 people. Um, the biggest sort of festival that we have here, that's an electronic festival, would be what I would call Earth Frequency, and that's more sort of like 7,000, 6,000, 7,000 um, people. So for some people, that's considered still quite small for an, an international, um, I guess, kind of basis. And I like, I like things staying to a particular size although it's not necessary for the festival to stay that size <laughs> um, for whatever it is that needs to to grow and change like obviously if the festival needs to grow and change and evolve into something else that's great although I don't tend to want to um, engage with it as much um, when it gets sort of past that 10,000 person uh, Mark, you know, not that I know they go to large festivals. I've been to Woodford Folk Festival, which can be up to like 140,000 people over a week's period of time. You know, and I've also been to Burning Man in, um, in Nevada, in the United States, and that was about 80,000 people. So I've experienced some extremities there. It's not my preference to do that on a regular basis. I find it a lot more sustainable for my mental, emotional and body, physical body. Um, if I want to do this on someone on a regular basis to, to keep it kind of small. Anyway, that's a whole backstory. What I'm really wanting to go into is obviously we had some changes on a global scale in regards to our abilities to come together in physical form. And so that, that really put a lot of pressure. I had a lot of um, festivals that we had to like cancel or postpone. Um, and some just completely stopped, um, yeah, sharing, sharing themselves as a festival anymore. Um, and now there's a supposed cost um, increase in many things. And here in Australia, we're really feeling it in regards to things like insurance. And then obviously um, materials as well. And then obviously services that we have to um, get in to be able to put on these events. So yeah, I'm aware like big, big festivals, we're talking things like um, Splendour in the Grass, these sort of mainstream outdoor festivals, they're usually only one or two a day and um, they cater more to a particular kind of music genres and music that might we might consider to be popular um, to mainstream and, and obviously a lot of them are now having to reassess whether they want to have their festivals on. Um, you know, if they're not reaching a certain level of ticket sales, they're just not even, um, you know, they're only giving sometimes themselves only a few weeks just to see how it goes and if it doesn't, then they're pulling the plug on it. And then there's sort of a lot of mid, mid-level sort of outdoor music festivals that are somewhat catered towards mainstream but not, um, not super niche and they too are struggling on a certain, certain level um, as well. So we're seeing a lot of them uh, having to cancel their their festivals and you know even some of the smaller ones are having to now so I just had the other day a lovely group up in um, Townsville where they have well they have their festival up now Townsville say look this is their last year that they're going to do it and they're a small they're a small festival you know they're like 500 600 people but it's just it, you know there's certain costs that obviously increase depending on the amount of people but then there's also certain costs where it's just like it's a real big blanket you know, and the tier doesn't um, change in cost um, that much. So, you know, unless you get really, really big and then obviously it increases. But, you know, insurance is just like a big, it's a big cost. Um, you know, unless you're wanting to do these kind of things illegally, which obviously uh, I'm not going to recommend here publicly on this on this channel. If you want to do things as properly as possible, it's... Um, becoming quite challenging and so there there's been a lot more of a rise in what I would call really niche you know I'm talking like 150 200 um, people kind of festivals and gatherings I would call them more of a gathering actually than a, than a festival 
and they're a lot more focused on um, even more focus on community and connection and co-creating this kind of collective energy together where you're all kind of in a very similar journey together throughout the whole you know it's two three four five day um, gathering and you know it's obviously a lot more focus on um, workshops as well you know the music is there but it's not like the main pool that people go for um, it's just part and parcel with what is being um, you know provided supported reciproc reciprocated and it also gives people a chance to um, step up into roles that maybe they wouldn't have an opportunity in a larger festival but when it's more of a grassroots thing then you're all like oh I've never really done this kind of role before but I could be really good with the skills that I have so it's an opportunity for people to develop certain skills in event management as well and keeping costs quite low you know having it on private properties and um, not having to get large amounts of facilities in um, there tends to be probably less uh, substances consumed unless it's more on the, um, the spectrum of a doof obviously yeah and it's more it's more tailored to like unique experiences and maybe less fluff if I may call it you know it's not so much on like fancy aesthetics and lighting and um, visuals and like the sound system has to be the absolute best sound system that you know they can get their hands on they still strive for those things and that's not to say that the visual art isn't there and there isn't um, amazing lighting and good sound it's just like it's not the you know that the resource is not there to go all out on it so like how can you get really creative with the supposed limited resources you know that we have you know whether not just be physical possessions but also like time and and people right and I often find with these sort of more niche um, gatherings but also small festivals as well it's like you can actually feel a deeper connection this is my my own personal experience right a deeper connection with the crew with the volunteers with the land with the artists with the facilitators there's a real um, feeling of a collective experience and just a deeper connection like I there are moments where I've gone out in big bigger festivals and like there's parts of it I enjoy because I can go out and kind of like not be known and kind of there's a part of me that likes to not be seen sometimes and just like oh I'm just witnessing this all and nobody knows me and I'm kind of like don't have a name or an identity to myself I'm just and I'm not I feel less attached to like having to um, certain things which is lovely and I, I can I can see that part of myself and I can enjoy that part of myself but there's also you know there can be times when you're out in um, festivals where maybe maybe you can feel alone because it's like you're just not quite connecting with people um, for me there can be challenges sometimes because I don't engage in substances I don't take in uh, substances like it it can also there can be this kind of feeling of like I'm like yes I can get into that vibration and I can be quite sensitive to like what's going on around me um, but it's like I'm not in the substance like I can just tap out whenever I want whereas I'm not like okay I'm dedicated to 12 hours of being in this space or I'm dedicated to like three hours of being on this medicine journey with someone or the next half hour with this intense substance with someone so and I'm also aware like that's not really that's not really real connection and another level another layer that's not really real connection if you're having to seek connection through the substance with with yourself people on the land then it's not really a sustainable it's not a true I don't want to use the word pure but that's what the word that wanted to come out way of actually connecting so sometimes yeah, there can be a little bit of a, a dissonance that I can feel but it do, you know it doesn't it's not challenging for me to connect with myself or I will always find someone that I'm resonating with in any moment and I'm not in a space where I'm very codependent or like anxiously attached that I have to be 
like always in the presence of someone else. I do need my space on my own and so um, I think that's another thing that I really like about certain gatherings. It's like I don't feel like I have to be with someone all the time. It's nice, you know, to to connect in with someone, like whether it be briefly for half an hour or maybe you get really deep with them for like six hours, um, you know, one afternoon or whatever. There's all this option and variety available um, to do that. And obviously in these sort of niche environments, if you're really interested in particular things, it's likely you're going to meet other people that are particular and inter- like interested in particular things. And there's a conversation that came up for me recently around, um, you know, obviously things like dating apps have been around for a number of years now, and they're not something that I engage in. Um, you know, there's been times like, oh, there's particular interests that I have. So like maybe, you know, me living in a city, it could be a good idea to get on an app to find people that are interested in particular things, but I'm not actually like looking for sex. But then there can be that kind of underlying thing that could be there that, and these other energies with the app that I don't want to have to engage with. And then um, it's just this kind of like reminder of self of like, oh, I go to these niche events outside the city and so yes I might not have a lot of friendships in the city but I've got a lot of friends that live outside the city and I met most of them if not all of them through these niche like events that I go to and I have I do I have full trust that I organically if I can put it that way I meet people all the time like it's not unusual for me to like go out to an event on my own and make a new friend or someone wants to connect with me on like get my phone number or take me on a date or like whatever it is you know like it it happens to me on a regular basis so I'm showing time and time again you know if I really want to connect with us all I got to do is go to these events and there's so many people that also have similar interests but not always the same and like that's the great thing about is there can be such a variety within a, a a type of human too which I really love um yeah, and I think we're, we're in a time where there's particular generations coming through where we really value experiences over physical items and possessions as well. So you can see how people's spending habits or their consumption of things is changing. But again, with this um, rise in cost that some people are experiencing, you know, things like food and accommodation um, and travel, you know, to get to places is is a little more important than entertainment if we want to put um, put these festivals in the category, right? They sort of sit in this um, entertainment category, right? And it's not that entertainment is a nourishing and essential for the thriving um, of humans, but it's in the list of hierarchical of needs, I guess a lot of us, we probably consider things like food and having a home. Um, of some sort, um, probably a little, just a bit more important than um, going to a festival. And for some people, it's like, okay, someone like myself, I've got capacity, depending on my working environment, you know, although my working environment is very good, I, I have a boss who allows me to take more time off. I could go to like 15 of these a year. Um, whereas for some people, you know, who might do that, usually I now having to go, oh, actually, I've really only got the, f- the abundance for, for six. So, you know, they're having to be a little bit more um, discerning about which ones they go to. And, like, you know, some people are having to spend more hours doing other things to create other abundance, like work, whatever you want to call it as well. It's just, <coughs> it adds to that. Um, yeah, but again, you know, if it's important to the people, they will still come. It's just a, for some people are having to reassess like how sustainable is this and, and also people having to, you know, maybe they might go um, to bigger events or they might organise bigger events and having to assess like maybe we can niche this more and make it smaller or do it differently or, you know, and this is really move, bigger move towards more grounded and connected um, gatherings and also, you know, to, to give back to the land too. I love it when I go to an event where... It's like, oh, we're actually, um, there's tree planting that's going on or there's some sort of gardening or we're building something that's going to um, help the land and the people that maybe even live here. So there's this really lovely feeling of reciprocity. And so 
I mean, the main crux of it is like costs, right? And there's also other agendas that are going on that are affecting um, the festivals and their ability to to create and, and have these available to us. But also when we're in challenges like this, it will often... <coughs> um, squeeze us to uh, think even more outside the box, get even more creative, you know, create things that we didn't even know were possible, didn't even know it was a thing that could be made, you know, be created um, from these forms of pressure. And, um, you know, and I, I do really feel, because I do have a friend who's had to, you know, one of the festival companies has gone into liquidation and them themselves is looking at having um, to go through bankruptcy. You know, and I really feel, I really, really feel for that person and I know they're not the only one that's experiencing hardship through all of this and I'm just trusting um, that it will lead to better things and, uh, and it will, it just, it can take time and shift some perspective as well for that to happen. And, you know, fast forward 20 years, it's, it'll then be like, a, oh, I see why that happened, so then allow that to happen, to this to happen, and then now we're here with this even more amazing thing that I didn't even know was possible. So, yeah, that's my little uh, TED talk on festival changes, my story with festivals, and what I love about them. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comment section down below if you and your community are putting on some really lovely um, festivals anything like that's coming up also welcome to leave that information down below and i will see you again soon